um, what's on your team's page uh, right now. So I'm going to share the screen again. And, and um, if anybody has any comments, you can stop us at any point. If you have questions, um, also you can write in the chat. So again, good morning, everybody. So um, one of the most important things for the for today, um, you know, obviously we have the Oedipus Rex stuff um, and um, what is also dropped today and yesterday are the Naviance lessons. Uh, Naviance is a career and college uh, system that Abraham Lincoln uses. You may have been introduced to this um, in the ninth grade team. Uh, and this is something that you're going to use all throughout your uh, high school career uh, to access information about colleges, to put information about yourself, to find information about different careers and jobs, um, to um, apply to colleges and other specialized programs. So um, what we're asking you to do for uh, yesterday and today is to log on and register to Naviance. Uh, and I've posted, there were two messages. This is two messages. This is today's message from Miss Blake, who is and Ms. Bosman, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe she's a school social worker. Um, but she also works with the in, in, in the liaison connection with the college office. So um, she passed along this these informational uh, texts and links for us to give to you guys. And we really want to ask that you um, complete this as soon as possible um, today even um, and this is in addition to the work for the week but this should be a priority first because we want to set you up on this as soon as possible so um, let me actually just bring the slide back up to um, oh that's actually my other team hold on that's my l team no wonder i was a little confused there uh, there we go Okay, so it's the same same thing, but um, I do want to show you the first post from yesterday, just in case you didn't see that. Here it is. Um, so it says um, today, please make sure to watch this video for Naviance or College and Career Information Application System. Click on the YouTube link to watch the video from Miss Blake. And so this is a message from Miss Blake, basically saying how to register or create a Naviance account if you don't have one already. Um, you will need your student OSIS number. That's your nine digit school ID. That's usually on your ID card. It's also available on your pupil path. You'll be able to um, look up the information there and find it. Um, and that is what you will use to register as a code for your account. Um, and any more like the more detailed breakdown of how to log in and register. Miss, Miss uh, Blake did include a, a link to a YouTube video. She recorded um, and you can check that out um, and log in from there. So the goals are to log in and get your account created and then today to do the uh, Naviance career survey. This, these are questions about your career interests. Um, it, it's a long survey, but it doesn't actually it's a lot of questions but it doesn't take long to fill out it's it's like uh you know uh pretty pretty fast what are you interested in agree disagree statements um and again there's another video here that miss blake has included in terms of how to access it there is a quick link to um to naviance from the library's webpage. so if you click on the uh, tiny url um you will get uh, to the Abraham Lincoln High School web library, which is pretty, it's a pretty cool place. There's a lot of different access points. You can also take out any books 
that the school has any ebooks you can take them out for free and Naviance is the third icon that you'll see you'll see Abraham Lincoln High School website you'll see a link to the Brooklyn Public Library website for uh, for you know you can get an account there um, and then the Naviance website so if you click on that um, it will take you to Naviance or student.naviance.com slash ablhs that's short for abraham lincoln high school um and it will eventually log on hopefully if it doesn't do that you can just search naviance in your uh search bar and it'll show up so anyway there you go this is uh miss blake's youtube link once you click on that this is what you would get and uh, she will take you through the career and interest profile. So again, I'm really asking you guys to do this first. If you haven't done this yet yesterday, today, today, make sure you get that done for us. Um, and we really appreciate that. So let me actually stop the share right there. Um, come back to you guys. Oh, hold on. Where are you at, guys? Did I lose you? There you are. Hey, Miss Bosman, there you are. Um, and I see that we have a couple other people joined in. So oh, actually, no, it's the same people. Evelyn joined in, so that's good. Welcome in, Evelyn. Um, so are there any questions Welcome. about the Nav? Yeah, are there any questions about the Navion system that we can try and answer for you? If not, you can always put your questions into Miss Blake, and she will try to help as much as possible. No. Okay, thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, Ms. Bosman, did you want to add anything about Naviance, or is that pretty much it? No, you think you nailed it. Okay, cool, cool. Um, let's go back into the share. Uh, and I will show you what's up on the Teams page besides the Naviance for today. Um, so, again, guys, um, our attendance channel. Uh, is here. So, Liana, thank you so much for putting your attendance there, as we can see. Um, that's for today. All students and, and pods A, B, and D, all students are on remote learning today. So, make sure that if you haven't uh, put present on the attendance post that you do that. Um, if you didn't notice on Friday, my trick or treat post, that's still up there. A little just a little something there some tricks some magic tricks that i enjoy in the spirit of halloween because you know not all tricks are tricks uh, in the in the evil sense of tricks um but you know I, I like magic tricks so that's my interpretation of trick or treat uh and then i made a video recording making chocolate peanut butter cups yeah uh they turned out pretty awesome, I gotta say. I'm still eating my batch. I, I saved a few for my mom and my dad and my sister, so um, wow. I'm behaving, behaving with that. But um, yeah, it's uh, I'll take you through it. <laughs> you can do it too. I'm sure you. I'm sure you guys are. Uh, this is like the first time I've made something like that, so I like I'm the expert on this. Come on, but it's it's a fun video. It's a funny video too. So check it out if you haven't yet. All right, that's enough shilling of my YouTube channel. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, all right, anyway, so up on the channel right now, the general channel, we've got uh, the new unit lesson from uh, Oedipus Rex part two. So the link is there. If you click the view assignment, you'll go to the assignment page. I recorded a overview video for the lesson. Um, I tried to keep it under 10 minutes. I wanna keep the overviews a little bit short so that we can deal a little bit more specifically during the live classes and other class videos I record. So that just kind of takes you through the general what you have to do with the lesson. We have the what's happening today post. Uh, that's from yesterday. This is the Navion survey uh career yep, yep 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 and i think that's that's kind of what's still what's up on the page there um did i put i guess i what i should do let me go in quickly and 
I'm going to take you guys. Well, I'll fix it later. That should say what's happening today, 11-3 in remote. I guess I mis mislabeled it. Um, anyway, um, so if you also, there's another, there's a, so the career and uh, profile survey. Uh, there's also the general survey that we're giving out based on your thoughts on the first marking period. Um, if you haven't, filled that out yet, the school student survey for the first marking period, please do so. The link is here in the daily update. Um, and, the, and that is a very quick survey. It takes like uh, five minutes, less than five minutes to fill out. We're asking you for your, um, your thoughts, your reflections on the first marking period, what worked, what didn't work, um, what's, what's your best learning um, style, that kind of stuff. So it's important to have your voice heard. Um, so make sure that you fill that out so we know what's working, what's not working. Um, OK, uh, mythology lessons, uh, I believe I unlocked the first week. Um, the second week, the first part of Oedipus Rex may be closed again, but I'll go in and reopen it so that people can finish it. Um, there were a lot of people are behind on that, so make sure you are. Um, taking it in stride and also that you're doing, you know, part one first that you're not skipping the part two, because if you just skip the part two, you might get confused a little bit. Um, so we're going to try, we're going to try and talk um, a little bit more specifically about stuff that's going on towards the beginning of part two. So we won't go too far ahead today, but um, we do want to focus on Oedipus and his conflicts, uh, his characterization and his conflicts with Creon today. So um, Creon would be his brother-in-law. Uh, and yeah, that's what we'll do. So um, before we do that, any questions uh, on this on the board, Ms. Bosman? Anything else to say? Yeah, I just I wanted to add Creon would be his uncle and his brother-in-law. His uncle and his brother. Yes. Yeah. So again, maybe we should drop the pretense, right? We'll 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 talk about, <laughs> you know, the fact that the prophecy uh, made by Tiresias that he would kill his father, and marry his mother, um, that is huge. I mean, it, it basically we know this from the almost the beginning of the play, and we now follow that line throughout. So. Um, Yes, there's some interesting family stuff going on here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's also, that's what dramatic irony is, when the audience knows something that all the characters do not know. That's what they refer to as dramatic irony. Yeah. Okay, so Ms. Boston, I don't know what you did in person yesterday, but um, do you, what would you would you want to go over the do now with them? Do you what, what do you want to do? Um, I know the the people that I had yesterday. We did go over do now. Um, I some of them didn't have answers, so uh -huh. I'd be curious to see if um they came up with anything. Uh, can we skip to the do now? Just sure. uh. Um, so again, just before we do the do now, again, the, this leads into it. So remembering the purpose of a Greek tragedy focuses on the downfall of a tragic hero and events leading to that downfall. So the idea that Oedipus is a tragic hero, right? He has some character, you know, he's likable, but at the same time, there are character flaws. And so we've listed uh, there are 25, and I'm sure there are more than this, but 25 major character flaws that happen for characters and stories. And then we want to ask you guys, based on the definition of a tragic hero, can you think of a famous person, past or present, or character from a movie or book that can be deemed a tragic hero? And uh, to support the answer with explanations. So, Ms. Bosman, do you want to maybe um, lead or, or ask us about that? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, if um, stories that we've read in the past, even celebrities or characters from TV shows or films. I'm just going to throw out an example. One of my classes, we had a debate about this. You kids may know the Marvel stories better than I do, but uh, I believe it was Thor's brother that came up as a tragic hero. Does anyone know the story of Thor and his brother? 
Yeah. Uh, is is it Val? Val? What is his name? I can't even remember. But Loki. Loki. Something. Loki. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> So if we look at the character flaws, uh, you can see some things from Loki's character flaws, yes? Uh, I'm seeing selfishness, that's a big part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's selfish at times, um, self-interest, mm -hmm. uh, cowardice mm -hmm. at times. Uh, and and correct, me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was treated like family. He had all the privileges that came with being in that family. So he right. was of high status. And he However, made some choice. Go ahead. Yeah, no, he did think of himself as always separate from Asgard. Um, mm -hmm. This is a characterization that's true both in the movies and in the comic books. He's, you know, he's part of the family, but he feels like he was always... Uh, you know, not given as much respect as Thor or other characters. You know, he's a, he's a half, uh, mm -hmm. half as guardian. Um, so would that, would that fall into that self-pitying a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe we should ask the students if they can think of other characters. It could, it could be yeah. not horrible. It could be other I was just using him as an example. People. Yeah, no, that's great, Ms. Bosman. I think that's a great example of what we're looking for. So is there anybody uh, here who can, you know, um, if you answered in Ms. if you were in Ms. Bosman's class or if you are remote, uh, anybody else, this is this is for anybody. Um, what are some characters you can think of who fit the definition of, of a tragic hero? And think of the person as someone who of high status, lots of money or lots of fame or leadership and they were liked but some bad choices may have led to their destruction you can think of it in that sense anyone uh, i'm gonna name two names and you tell me if you disagree high uh if they're tragic heroes but you gotta tell me why um, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson. Do you believe they were cons they were tragic heroes? If you do believe it, explain why. I think Whitney Houston was a tragic hero. And why? Why? Because she did have like a good career. She was very well known, but she decided to um, do some things that led to her passing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you say something, do you mean her drug use? Yeah. I, I would agree. I would agree with that. I think that um, she was definitely de dealing with some internal conflicts and um, which led to her own demise. It doesn't mean I, I don't like her or I dislike her any less. It's just, you know, we're just stating our truth, our opinion, right? Anyone else? What about a Michael Jackson figure? Anyone know how Michael Jackson died? Am I this old? <laughs> Do people know who Michael Jackson is? Yes, yes, you are. <laughs> this pause and so am I. Um, why don't you guys name your own choice? Let's 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 uh, have you guys volunteer. I know Ryan and Jennifer were unmuting and then they muted themselves back. So Ryan or Jennifer, if you guys had any suggestions. Yeah, I was going to ask if it has to be a character. It can be a real person. I mean, as we just said, Ms. Bosman brought up two uh, real musicians. So, well, who are you? Thinking? I was thinking of, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, uh, Alexander the Great. 
Yeah, absolutely. What do you know about Alexander the Great and any tragic flaws in uh, in him? Yeah, because he basically got, he made the whole nation basically really powerful. And then out of nowhere, he starts to die and then they lose everything that Hmm. they... All right, very good. Good example. Uh, someone who, so basically people who have this, this overinflation of ego. Go ahead, Ryan. Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm still getting feedback from you, but if you want to continue your point, go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah, that was it. I think I might be getting feedback because I have like my win. Okay, no worries. Um, Jen, thank you very much, Ryan. And, and um, uh, was it Casey before who had, who had volunteered? Um, and Jennifer, did you uh, have a suggestion? Um, you were unmuting yourself. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking about the uncle of Miles Morales during the Spider-Man movie. Oh, where, sure. Where the uncle, like, at first glance, he seemed like a good guy. But after the reveal of him being evil, he just tragically lost his life due to his interference with the with the evil side. Yeah, I, I feel like... Um, it's it's funny because obviously we we deal with stories with heroes and villains, good and evil. Um, but even a character like um, the Prowler, who I think you're thinking of, uh, uh, Aaron, his his um, he his he's likable in that he cares for Miles and he takes care of him and he looks out for him and he's like a mentor figure. But if you look at the character flaws we listed here, um, there's definitely a few that are that are there. Um, selfishness, hypocrisy is one of them, um, and um, I feel maybe even um, self denial, certainly cowardice. Like that's that's a bit that's a part of it. Um, yeah, for sure. So great, great explanation, and I appreciate that. And, and uh, I just saw I think Matt had Madison just joined us. Did anybody else join us that I'm missing? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. So welcome in. Okay, so great. Um, so those are just some examples of how we can think about people. You know, people are very complicated, real people especially, but a good character, you know, someone who writes a good character will make something um, much more than just simply good versus simply evil. I mean, if you look at, um, you know, um, Sarah Snape and in, uh, in, uh the Harry Potter stories, if you look at um, Hamlet, if you ever read Hamlet, these are characters who there's something likable about them, but there's a choice or two that they make that turns them in the wrong direction that leads to the end they're undoing. And Othello, you know, yes. Othello another Shakespearean um, lead character. Um, in the book, we if you... Um, if we are uh, teaching you guys for um, the spring, if we read the play Fences, Ooh, uh, yes. the character Troy Maxson is a tragic hero. Uh, so there's a lot. There's a lot to say about you know people are very complicated. Oedipus is certainly a complicated character. He, we we are told about his heroics. We are told that he is a popular person because of them. We are told that he has noble virtues. And then we read the story and we see when this characterization, there are things about him that make him a good leader. There are things about him that maybe don't make him the best leader. Um, things that he says and does with his brother, with Tiresias the prophet. And we hear his speech, we see the or read the words that he says, we see what he's thinking in these moments, or we, we, we pick up on that what he's feeling as a result of being told this prophecy and his reaction to it, his actions that he takes, especially with his brother, um, basically blaming his brother-in-law and um, and Tiresias and trying to basically uh, deny and put the blame on them, accusing them. Uh, and and uh, all that um, really leads into his characterization, the way, you know, what we can tell about him um, as the as the story progresses. So if you if you're just beginning Oedipus Rex, if you're going back to part one, um, those first parts, 
it really is kind of his raw his you know he's at a very popular point he's you know you can see all the things all the good things that are said about him or read them um and then as the as the play goes on as the story goes on um how that kind of goes down that has a downward trend um so that's a big thing we're looking at as characterization and conflict this week so starting again with characterization um uh, what are the characteristics of a strong leader what does a strong leader have um, in terms of um, what they say, what they think, how they feel, what they do, what what the, what they might even look like. So we're asking you on your word organization, uh, word document to to write that and then answer the questions um, that come after, which is once you've got that list of five characteristics, choosing two and then applying them to Oedipus, and supporting that with textual evidence. So you can say this is in the play when, or this happens when. Um, you can do characteristics and say, what are some of Oedipus flaws, you know, based on what you were reading about him? Because again, there are things that we can like about him. And then there are things that maybe we're not gonna like about him characteristics wise, that'll tell us, you know, uh, well, you know, maybe this guy isn't as the, the big, big a leader as he or could be, but people do consider him to be a, a strong leader. So um, it's just, you know, the, this tragic situation starts setting in and then things start happening. Um, so let's just let's just go over. What do you guys think are some characteristics of a strong leader? Honesty, that's one. Hey, Nathan, thank you. Honesty. Let me write. Let me uh, see if I have a whiteboard. Let's see if I can do this. Come on, R. Uh, okay, let's. Nathan, why is honesty a good characteristic to have as a leader? I mean, you gotta be honest to the people. I mean, if you're not honest to the people, the people won't back you. That's simple. Hmm. Mm. Okay, very good. Yeah, very good. Uh, you guys, let me know if you can see a whiteboard. Can anybody see that? No. Let's try again. No, I don't see anything yet. <sighs> Damn technology. Okay. Uh, uh, so Nathan says honesty and uh, you want me to type it in the notes? You can, yeah, if you want to put in the conversation, that'd be awesome. Okay. Uh, I will try one more time. And if this doesn't work, we'll just talk it out. Okay. So weird because that worked in my other other live classes that I've done this, but it, maybe it's because yeah. I'm maybe it's because I'm recording that it won't show up. Maybe that's a part of it. I got honesty. Okay. Great. So what else? Someone else tell us a shared characteristic. Or a character. A characteristic confidence. Leader. confidence. Confidence. Thank you. Why is confidence? Well, uh, kind of hard to explain in a way. Well, if you show you. Uh, you broke up there, Nathan. If you project confidence, then the people will just see you as a person to follow. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, uh, so before we move on, anybody else, any other characteristics of a strong leader? Accountability. Accountability. Good. Accountability. So honesty, confidence, accountability. Nathan, thank you so much. Coming in strong with three characteristics of a strong leader. Accountability, right? When we are told when we do something or when we say we're gonna do something, people expect us to do it. So accountability. Did you do what you said you were going to do? 
Mm -hmm. And if you did, then you're living up to your word. And if you don't, then um, you're you're not living up to your word. You're not, and you know, if you do something that the people don't like, um, you have to be to a certain extent, hopefully, held accountable for it. Um, so ironic, we're having this conversation on November. I know. 3rd. <laughs> but and, uh, and, 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 <laughs> well, and, uh, and yeah. when a Go leader ahead, doesn't have accountability, that can affect the people wanting to continue to follow them. Sure. Um, so let's apply this to Oedipus and what we know about him so far. Um, so as far as honesty, um, accountability, and what was the other one that we talked about? Honesty and confidence. Confidence. Okay. okay. So um uh, Ms. Bosman, what do you think? Let's let's do one together and then we'll ask some of the students to do one of the other two. So what did you, which one do you want to talk about? Honesty, confidence, uh, or confidence for Oedipus? I like I like his confidence. Okay, so how is Oedipus uh, demonstrating confidence as a characteristic of leadership so far in the play? Do you want me to answer or do you want the kids to answer? <laughs> no, you will. Let's model and then we can um, okay, have yeah. answer. Yeah. Well, I think that when he discovered there was a plague in, in, in this town of Thebes, you know, he immediately wanted to jump in and solve it. You know, he had the confidence in himself that he could solve this riddle and he wasn't afraid of this new challenge. Um, I see it in ways when he finds out there's a new plague going on. He wants to he wants to jump to it and get and find the solution. Mm -hmm. He's not afraid of challenges. That's the first thing I noticed about him. Yeah, I agree with you. And I would add that, um, you know, in terms of his leadership skills and being confident, you'll notice and all those students, I want you to notice the, the way he speaks in the first part of the play is is very confident, very grandiose, big words, big bold claims, um, very grand in terms of, you know, this is what I did. I solved the riddle of the Sphinx. I am going to solve the riddle of uh, the mystery of who killed the king, King Laius. Um, very confident in that. Um, yes. As the play goes on, his confidence is still there. Um, but it almost is an overconfidence um, that he can find the real answer. That even though that he's being told the answer, that he can find the answer for himself, even mm -hmm. though he should already know. We already know. It. All right. So, yeah, go ahead. What's, what's the word overconfidence? What's, what's the word we learned this week? Someone, someone has too much confidence. Cockiness. Yes, I was looking for a P word. Did you do this in class, Miss Bosman, with your with students? With some of my students, yes. Okay, some of them, because maybe some of the students here are just remote only. I don't know. Oh, okay. sorry. A few of a few of them might be from your class. Yes. So. Well, the cockiness can it also be prideful. Sure, pride, pridefulness in your ability for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and pride, you know, pride is a funny thing. You can have pride in your work, but too much pride. Um, as the saying goes, go before a fall, right? If you're too uh, boasting, too mm -hmm. prideful about what you've done, you're blind yourself to um, what comes next because there's always something that comes next, right? So he solved the riddle of the Sphinx. You know, he's this great leader now. What comes next? And it's almost like he's setting himself up not to be able to see what's happening until it's too late. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, vision, blindness, sight, both literally and metaphorically speaking, so important in this play. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Especially think about Tiresias, the blind prophet who can see the future, and Oedipus who sees these riddle solutions but can't see the, the very thing right in front of his face. Um, okay, okay. So that's confidence. So that leaves us with... What were the other two? Uh, this is why I needed a whiteboard so I could write this down. <laughs> we talked about confidence. We said um, accountability. accountability. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, is there anybody who wants to talk about either one of those two, honesty or accountability? From what you know of Oedipus so far, um, how does that apply? Honesty and accountability. Or if you can think of another leadership characteristic and you want to add that in 
to our conversation, please do so. Um, it's not really a leadership characteristic, but it goes straight to Oedipus on this one. That is being rude or disrespectful. Mm. Good. Uh, how how is he being rude? If you can remember. Um, the way how he treated the old man, the old mm-hmm. prophet. You Teresius. know, yes. Teresius disregarding him, treating mm-hmm. him like trash. I mean, mm. that's nothing you don't want in a good leader. That's not a good leader quality. I agree, Nathan. Good. Yes. But sorry, Miss Bosman. No, I'm just saying very good. To, to, that's what he, he got gathered from that. Absolutely. Nathan, uh, thank you so much so far uh, for explaining these things. And if anybody else wants to add either in the chat or uh, unmuting yourself in conversation, please do so. Um, because these are really good things to, to, to look for when you're reading in Oedipus. The, these moments of where, you know, people say he's respectful, but look at the way he treats Tiresias, look at the way he treats his brother-in-law, Creon. Mm-hmm. Um, and at, at points, you know, it, it seems like, well, maybe he's not so respectful of these people. So, um, yeah, again, when we look at Oedipus's character flaws, you know, they're there. Um, and, you know, the, the more the play goes on, the more they're magnified, the more that they um, lead to his undoing. So some other characteristics, if we look at this slide, we can we can talk about this stuff now. Um, honesty, sense of justice, compassion, quick thinking, quick to act, bravery, concern for well-being of his people. So a lot of these are really good qualities to have, obviously, to have a sense of justice, to um, want to see things set right. Why else would he say, I'm going to go and find who the real, who the murderers are for King Laius? I want to find these people, bring them to justice. Well, okay, he says that, but he also says, I want to do it so that they don't come after me either. I, I'm concerned about my own well being. So there's that selfishness versus selflessness thing coming into play. Mm-hmm. Um, Compassion and quick thinking. Um, we definitely see him having compassion for the people and concern for well being of his people. Um, bravery, obviously, in his boldness and his um, very quick decision making about what to do and where to go. But again, being quick to act can also backfire, as we'll show. I'm going to show you this the scene in the beginning of part two where he talks to Crayon and he makes these quick decisions about trying to cut him off, trying to cut Crayon off from from power and authority, and maybe he's being too quick. Um, I did want to highlight um, this awesome, and again, this uh, the tragedy of of 2020. Um, one of the, um, so I was reading about this awesome performance of Oedipus Rex that was taking place in Chicago in 2019 as I was doing research for um, this unit. Um, so I wanted to show you guys pictures of um, Oedipus played by Kelvin Ralston Jr., who's uh, apparently a really up-and-coming actor in the Midwest scene, um, and Jocasta played by Kay Collins. So this is a uh, more mo- like a more avant-garde, I guess, um, kind of fancy way of of putting Oedipus on the on the on the on the stage. Um, but apparently this perform this this run of Oedipus Rex in Chicago was getting massive rave reviews. Um, and unfortunately, you know, obviously uh, that was last year and this year things are shut down for now. But um, yeah, what I, well, if you look at that picture, I mean, look at that Oedipus r- wardrobe, the, the purple, um, which Miss Bosman, you, you will know what, what is the significance of purple and royalty? Yes, that's definitely a color for royalty. Yeah. Regalness, yes. yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, so also, uh, Kay Collins. You, I don't know if you guys can see, but when you open up your slide, um, an older actor uh, playing Jac- actress playing Jocasta, and um, uh, Kevin is a little bit of an he's he's, he's on the younger side. Um, I don't know his real age, but um, obviously you can see the age disparity, right? Jocasta mm-hmm. is. Was married to Leia. She's an older woman in the play. There's an older actress playing the role, and so you can also see in the characterization 
um, the the age disparity, and it makes you go, hmm, you know, not that you know, not to make any judgments about. This isn't to make judgments about um, older, younger, younger, older relationships, but you'll see that that kind of in the play itself kind of bears itself out by the way the characters look. So that goes into that's the L part of the steel characterization analysis looks right. So mm -hmm. looks are very important. Portrayal of the characters are very important. Um, and um, that's a really cool. I really wish um, I, I, I didn't find they, you, you can try and find if you can find any clips of it. I'm not sure I was not able to. But uh, yeah, there you go. There's one performance of Oedipus Rex that was very recent. Um, internal and external conflict. Um, we'll spend um, just a minute on this, and then I want to go into the. Um, yes. Nathan, is that you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the end of the unit. Yeah, that's me. Because the end of the unit is next week, right? Yeah, so um, the third and final part is next week, and then the week after that is our central idea response. So that's, you know, you'll get another mythology story and have to write a uh, two or three paragraph idea response to that. So we have, yeah, uh, that's kind of our layout. It's a five week unit. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, for people, or is it a question? Right, have a good day. All right, Nathan. Thank you for your participation today, man. Yes, thank you. For everyone um, uh, who's watching or still here, um, so as far as assignment completion goes, let's do a quick note on that. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to reopen assignments, um, and from now until the end of the marking period, Assignments we put up, I put up there. I actually didn't run this by you, Ms. Bosman, but um, I guess we'll do it now. Um, I'm just going to leave it open, right? As opposed to having a lock date or a closed date, um, you know, because again, people, it seems like people are on different tracks. You know, some people yes. are behind, some people are on pace. Um, I want to make sure that everybody has the best possible opportunities to succeed, um, get yes. the work done. So um, if it's okay with you, we're gonna just going to leave the class work open until the end of the second marking period. That's wonderful. OK, good. All right, so guys, just be aware that you may get a notification on Teams saying, you know, assignment details have been changed. I've done this a couple of times. Uh, don't freak out. It's just me updating the due dates and reopening the, the, the assignments so that you can finish them. So that's it's a good thing. All right, so last thing I want to do, because we are we're, we're kind of running short a little bit now, we're getting to the last 15 minutes of uh, available class time. I want to go through, let's leave the let's leave the conflict stuff for later in the week. Let's actually we'll, we'll use this reading to kind of get into that. Um, let me see if I can bring this up. Uh, and Ms. Boss, can you let me know, can you see the reading here? Yes, OK, so we'll just I'm going to read to you guys the highlighted. There's a couple highlighted passages I have in the beginning of this part. Um, again, where it says start reading here for the week this week, that's where you start. Um, I believe we've, we've in the first week's lesson, we gave you the entire reading, but the second and third part does not have the annotation questions. So you can read this, the entire play all at once if you want, but the questions we you know, notes are available in the second week's assignment. So here's Creon starting this part to recap. Teresius said this part reveals that Oedipus killed King Laius and then unknowingly married his mother and had children with her. Uh, Creon says, friends, countrymen, I learned King Oedipus have laid against me a most grievous charge and come to you protesting. If he deems that I have harmed or injured him in aught by word or deed in this, our present trouble, I care not to prolong the span of life, thus ill reputed for the calumny, which is a false slanderous statement. So he believes this is, he's been falsely accused of this, uh, this accusation. Hits not a single blot, but blasts my name. If by the general voice I am denounced false to the state and false by you, my friends. Um, and he has a conversation with the chorus. Um, 
And then he and Oedipus kind of have this conflict, have this argument about whether or not Creon is the one responsible um, for all the things that are being told to Oedipus um, uh, and what Tiresias says to him. So in this uh, highlighted section, did the same prophet then pursue his craft? Yes, skilled as now and in no less repute. Did he at that time ever glance at me? Not to my knowledge, not when I was by, but was no search and inquisition investigation made. Surely full quest was made, but nothing learnt. While I failed the seer prophet to tell a story then, I know not and not knowing hold my tongue. Thus, mal thus much thou knowst and canst surely tell. What meanst thou? All I know I will declare. But for thy prompting, never had the seer ascribed to charge to me the death of Laius. If so, thou, uh, he thou knowest best, but I would put thee to the question in my turn. Question and prove me murderer if thou canst. Let me ask thee, didst thou wedst my sister? A fact so plain I cannot well deny. And as thy consort queen, she shares the throne. I grant her freely all her heart desires. And with you twain, I share the triple rule. Yes, and it proves thee a false friend. So in these sections, we see Crayon in a little bit of trouble um, and Oedipus and Crayon are having an external conflict, an argument. Uh, Ms. Bosman, what do you think is, uh, is important about this section, if anything? <laughs> You're on mute. OK, yes, um, as I was listening to it, you know, um, I, I just. I'm not sure, but for some reason, I've always felt like there was some ego and jealousy going on here with these two. And he's like, you know, didn't you not wed my sister? And he, had, he like, I give her everything she could ever desire. But I just feel like he's the outsider in this family. I mean, at least that's how Creon is seeing him as the outsider. He doesn't. No one knows. These two don't know what what we all know yet. You know what I mean? These two wouldn't be going to a bar to have beers. Right. Or, they're right. not friends. You know, they're not friends. They're they're distant in-laws. You know. I know. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, good. What do you guys think about that? What are some of the things that the, you know, did you notice in terms of conflict and characterization between these two? Anything stand out for you guys? I have a question. Sure, Casey, go ahead. Wait, I'm sorry, I forgot. What did Oedipus accuse him of again? The crime? Well, they're both accusing each other. Oh, for the killing murder. the previous king. Oh, okay. Yeah, think about the mo I mean, think about the motives that yeah. Crayon might have. Uh, I mean, he's the new king. He's married to the king's wife. <laughs> Well, that's Oedipus, but Crayon, the brother, might want power, right? Mm -hmm. oh. So that's what Oedipus thinks. Oedipus is being ju very judgmental here, right. trying to solve the puzzle, trying to solve the riddle, saying, well, you have a motive. You have a motive. You have pa You want power, right? You want to have the rule. Um, and, you know, him and Jocasta and Oedipus, they share responsibility and power, um, obviously, because Crayon is a prince. Uh, and Jocasta is a queen. So this idea of having power and influence, I mean, yeah, maybe Cre maybe Oedipus believes that Creon could kill his dad um, out of a desire for power and ambition. So those are some characteristics he's ascribing to him, for sure. Anything else? Any other things that um, jump out at you? Anybody else? That was a good question, Casey. OK, um, just going back here. So the idea of Oedipus um, also seems to be blaming Tiresias for not the, the seer mm. or prophet for not being able to tell him the, a different story, to, for not being able to to tell him that Crayon has the responsibility or, or the power. Um, and then just going back up to the beginning of what I read um, again, this idea of Crayon feels so injured by being accused that 
he feel like he will like he's basically saying i care not to prolong the span of life he's saying put me to death if you really have this evidence if you think that i'm the one responsible for the death of my dad you know um this is a false slander statement this is something that's not true but if you really have the proof if you have it just you know put me to death if i'm if i'm denounced to be false to the state if i'm an enemy of the the country of the people um and the chorus, um, I don't have it highlighted, but the chorus right underneath says, he sa uh, they say, may well be was blurted out in petulance, bad temper, not spoken advisedly. So they're trying to say that maybe Oedipus was speaking in a, in a bad tempered way, that maybe he blamed him out of anger. Um, so again, in the second part of the reading, you know, we are starting to see some of the tragic uh, characterizations, tragic flaws of Oedipus jump out, you know, um, in terms of being accused of something. Um, I think maybe we're, we I mean, should, yeah, Miss Bosman, go ahead. I mean, just, I mean, yeah, I mean, and just with that statement with the chorus, I mean, when we're, when we do things out of anger, sometimes we're too quick to act or when we may lash out, you know, um, these are characteristics certainly of Oedipus. This is what the author is giving us. And what does he do with it? You know, what create? I mean, that anger creates this conflict even more so with Creon. Very good, uh, Miss Bosman. Did you want to? Can you see the screen? Do you want to read this uh, next highlighted section? Yes, this is Creon. Start with Creon. Yes. What then, thou will to banish me the land, Oedipus? I would not have thee banished. No, but dead that men may mark the wages and be reaps. I see that will not yield nor credit me. None but a fool would credit such, a, such as thou. thou. Creon, thou art not wise. Wise for myself at least? Why not for me too? Why for such a knave, a deceitful man? Suppose thou lackest sense, yet kings must rule. Not if that, not if they rule ill. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and what are some characteristics Oedipus is displaying in the section above? What is he doing that shows him to be either a, a good leader or a not so great leader? Selfishness. Selfishness. How is he selfish in this section, Jennifer? Well, he wants to keep his his status as a king, but Creon says that a king doesn't rule badly. Good. I'm glad that you can see, and I hope everybody else can see, that Creon is actually pointing out uh, a lack of leadership, a lack of on, a lack, not even lack of honesty, but lack of accountability here, right? A lack of sense, even, right? These are things that leaders should have, kings should have, according to you know Crayon and everybody else, you know, at this point. And and by falsely accusing Crayon, uh, he believes that that makes Oedipus not a great leader. Um, so very good for pointing that out. He calls him a fool. So Oedipus calls him a fool. Um, and then Cram says, you're not wise. So they're both kind of pointing the finger at each other saying, no, you, you're not, you're not yeah. smart. You're not, you're a fool, right? You're um, the idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you started it, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, yet kings must rule, not if they rule ill. So in, in that line, you know, if, if a king rules badly, if a king doesn't rule, cor you know, correctly with uh, a leadership, you know, then they were thought to maybe not have been worthy or fit to to be the leader. So, and again, remember, Oedipus wasn't the king here until he came in, and they decided, oh, you know, you saw the real Sphinx, you should be the king. You should, you know, marry Jocasta. You know, fall in love with Jocasta, marry her. You know, th these are all, you know, the idea of Crayon, as Miss Bosman said, not thinking he was a part of the family, uh, not fitting in. You know, these are all kind of these little pecks that come at him mm -hmm. and they certainly alter the way he acts and his own his own uh, selfishness, his own anger, yeah. jealousy and, and fear. I, it all kind of 
Yes, Miss Bosman, go ahead. We're, we're I mean, about, as, got about five minutes left, so I'm going to leave the last word to you before we close. No, as, as, I would, as we were reading the scene, I also inferred for the first time after 300 times of reading this, um, Creon might be a lot older than Oedipus. So Oedipus yeah. might be younger than him and is given, he's the king and give him all these orders or whatever. Because I'm assuming a lot of times we have the same, we're close to the ages of our sister. Jocasta would be his sister. And we know that Jocasta is older than him. So, I mean, the author doesn't give it to us, but we can infer that age also might have played into their conflict with each other as well. Absolutely. Um, so we we are we're running up against it. We got about five minutes in the live class time, but um, we can stop there for now. And then in Thursday's class, maybe go further a little bit more with the internal and external conflict that he feels. Um, and I, obviously, uh, today was just because of election day. Everybody's in here, so I know Miss Bosman, you will be in person tomorrow. Blended learning resumes tomorrow, uh, Thursday, Friday. My remote only students, you know, obviously will check in um, on Teams and I will hold my next live class uh, Thursday. As far as I know, if that changes, I will let you know. But Thursday, 830 to 945. Uh, so before we get out of here, any last questions or comments or concerns from uh, people attending the class? And I just saw um, who, who's jumped in here that I didn't reckon that I didn't acknowledge. Uh, so, Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you jumping in. Uh, I came in after when I screen share, it's hard for me to see uh, who jumps in into the uh, classes. So thank you for making it in and thank you everyone else. I appreciate you being here for the live class um, and um, yeah, just um, again, make sure that you do the Naviance uh, materials. Make sure that you're staying on top of the mythology unit for second marking period. Again, I will reopen any locked assignments, mythology lessons one, two, and three. Three should be open. One should be open. I think two locked, and I have to reopen it. So that will probably happen in the afternoon. Okay. All right, guys. Until then, thank, uh, until next time, thank you so much. Ms. Bosman, thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. thank you. Yes, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, uh, everyone. Madison, Casey, Evelyn, Jennifer, uh, Muhammad, Nabil, Ryan, Nathan, before did a great job. Everyone did a great job. All right, and guys. You I'm did gonna... a great job, too, Mr. Parrish. Oh, thank you so much, as did you. It's always a pleasure to, to be co-teaching with you. Uh, you know, doing these things. We've, we've done these more than than I expected because of all the, you know, oh, we're here, we're not here, but um, it, it's been great. It's great working with you so far. I'm looking forward to more. Oh, amen. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm going to stop recording here.